All right, we've got one more. This one is by Tommy DePaulo, my favorite author. This story is called Tom. And inside, Tommy wrote a special note to all of his readers. It says, I always thought my Irish grandfather was my special friend because I was named after him. He loved to tell stories and make me laugh. I hope I'm following in his footsteps because I love to tell stories too and to make people laugh, especially young people. Tommy's grandfather always used to say, we name, we're named after each other, Tommy. That's why I want you to call me Tom instead of Grandpa. So Tommy did. Tommy and his father went to visit Tom and Nana almost every Sunday. Nana was Tommy's grandmother. And every Sunday, for as long as Tommy could remember, Tom read the Sunday comics out loud. Tom used different voices, which made Tommy laugh and laugh. Sometimes Tom acted out funny poems. Tommy's favorite was the animal fair. I went to the animal fair. The birds and the beasts were there. The big baboon with the light of the moon would comb out his golden hair. Tom would pretend to comb and comb long, long hair. But this was funny because he was bald. Tommy would get the giggles, and as Tom went on, he giggled louder and louder. Sometimes he would squeal and laugh so loud that Tom would start laughing too. Tom, Downy Nana would say, you're just as bad as that child. Sometimes if they were really loud, Nana would say, Tom, Downy, you're just as bad as that child and all the Downies and the rest of the Irish. When that happened, and it was winter time, Tom would say, Come on, Tommy, let's go to the cellar and shake and sift the ashes. Tom and Nana had a big coal furnace, and Tom would shake the ashes to keep the coal burning. Now we'll sift the ashes to get rid of the clinkers, and we'll save the ashes to put on the sidewalk if, you, if it gets icy. Then Tom and Tommy would sit down near the warm furnace. Tom would light his corncob pipe. Nana wouldn't let him smoke it upstairs. And he would begin telling stories. Some about himself when he was a little boy, and some that he made up. Tommy loved those the most. If it was not winter, they would just sit outside the cellar door and talk. Once they went next door to the lubbies and saw their puppies. Those are firehouse dogs, Tom told Tommy. Your great uncle Jim had one when he was a fire chief. He named him Sparky, and when the siren went off, he would run alongside the fire engine all the way to the fire. Tom and Nana had a grocery store. Nana was in charge of the front of the store. Tommy helped put the cans of food on the shelves just the way Nana wanted them, nice and neat with the labels facing out. Tom was in charge of the back of the store. He was a butcher, and behind the counter was Tommy's butcher's table, where he cut up the meat for his customers. Next to what was the big grinding machine, Tom would grind up pieces of beef into hamburger. Tommy liked to help him. Be careful now, Tom always said. I don't want any fingers in my hamburger. Sometimes when Tommy was there, Mrs. Novak brought in the chickens that his grandfather would sell. Their feathers were all plucked, but their heads and feet were still on. Tom would take his cleaver and whop, off came the head. Whop, whop, off came the feet. Once, Tom gave Tommy a chicken head to take home. See this, he told Tommy. Well, if you plant it in the garden and don't disturb it for three weeks, you'll have a chicken bush. Tom put it in a bag and tied it with string. Tommy couldn't wait to get home and bury it, but after only three days, he dug it up to see if anything was happening. The next week, when Tommy told Tom that nothing was growing, Tom said, too bad. It will only work once. He knew that Tommy couldn't wait three weeks without looking. Well, let me show you something else. He picked up a chicken foot. See that little white string thing? It's called a tendon. If you pull it, the chicken foot opens and closes. Try it. Tommy tried. It was scary, but it didn't make him giggle. Tom put two chicken feet in a bag and he tied it with string. When Tommy got home, he washed the chicken feet with soap and a scrub brush because they were kind of smelly. Then he asked his mother if he could borrow some of her nail polish. What for, his mom asked. It's a secret, Tommy told her. 
All right, but please don't spill it. Tommy picked the brightest red and painted the claws on the chicken feet. All weekend, Tommy practiced holding a foot in each hand and pulling the tendons. The chicken feet opened and closed. Grunja, grunja. On Monday morning, Tommy hid the chicken feet in his pocket and he went to school. His best friend Jeannie was standing in the schoolyard. Tommy held a chicken foot in each hand and pulled his hands up in his sleeves so the chicken feet stuck out. He put his arms in back of him. Hi, Jeannie, Tommy said. Hi, Jeannie answered. Garanja, garanja, eek, Jeannie screamed. Three girls turned around to look. Garanja, garanja, went Tommy and the chicken feet. Eek, 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 the girls screamed. Tommy turned around. Garanja, garanja. Uh-oh, it was his teacher. Tommy spent the whole morning in the principal's office. She threw away his chicken feet and sent him home with a note. Tommy is not allowed to bring chicken feet to school ever again. Miss Burke, principal. The next weekend, when Tommy went to visit Tom and Nana, Tommy told Tom all about it. Well, Tom said, we'll just have to think of something else to do, don't you think? And Tom gave Tommy a big wink. Hope you like that one. Bye, guys.